Hello, all you beautiful people. Um, so today is kind of a continuation of what we started discussing yesterday, which is solving systems by graphing. Um, today, I'm going to take you a little further in the sense that we're going to deal with graphing technology. So we're going to learn how to do this on our graphing calculators. Now, um, you haven't done a lot on your graphing calculators yet, so this may feel hmm, a little frustrating, it may feel a little confusing. Um, it also is going to be uh, important that you're listening to the right directions because as we go through this, I'm going to split my conversation up between Casio Kids and TI Kids depending on the model that you have for your calculator. Okay, so make sure you're following the right directions or you're going to be like even more confused. Um, and don't stress if you don't get it the first time. Okay, um, the nice thing about watching a video on this is you can kind of rewind, go back. Um, try it again. If you miss something, um, stop the stop the video, start it again, um, and just keep trying. Okay, and make sure you're coming and seeing me with any questions that you have um, as you as you go through this. Okay, okay. So, couple of things, kind of as way of an introduction. In the last lesson, we looked at the f at the following systems of equations and sketched it by hand. Today, we want to look at how to use our graphing calculator to do the same thing. Now, please, please, please keep in mind, a graphing calculator is a tool. It's a great way to check your answer. Um, but on a test, I'm going to want you to produce hand-drawn graphs for me, okay? So, and they have to be accurate. Um, it's funny because I'll give a test and kids will think, oh, good, I can just solve this on my graphing calculator. And then they, they don't do anything for a hand-drawn one and then they give me the right answer. Well, the right answer is worth nothing if you don't have the work to back it up, okay? So you have to still be comfortable doing hand drawings. Um, and you need to be able to show how to obtain the solution from the system. And remember, that was the whole purpose of yesterday's class um, is we talked about the fact that the solution is that point of intersection, okay? If all you do is do it in your calculator, you're not communicating too well. Okay, so here we go. First thing we need to do is write these equations in uh, y equals mx plus b form. So even if you don't have a graphing calculator yet, um, you want to practice throughout this lesson. You want to practice isolating for y. You want to practice building your system. Okay, and you want to practice verifying your solution. Those are still all things that you can do without a graphing calculator. And those are all things that algebraically I'm looking for work for along with the hand drawn, okay? The difference with some of the, the pictures that we have today is I would never ask you to do these ones by hand because the numbers are bigger, okay? Um, but you can do all the other stuff. You can practice building the system. Um, you can practice verifying the system and making sure you understand your legends, okay? So here I go, isolating for y, I want to bring my 3x over and my 12 over and then divide everything by four. So that gets me y equals negative three over four x minus three, okay? On the other uh, equation, I'm gonna bring that negative four y over so that he's positive four y, and then I'll divide everything by four and that gives me y equals one quarter x minus seven. Now, now grab your graphing calculator, okay? You have to do this, whether you're doing it by hand or by graphing calculator, you have to start with this. They always have to be in y equals mx plus b form, okay? If you have a graphing calculator, go grab it, take a look at what your brand name is. Is it Casio or is it TI? If it's Casio, you're following along on the uh, left side of my slide, and if it's TI, you're following along on the right side of my slide, okay? So, uh, if you're Casio, you need to get into your graphing feature, uh, which is menu and then graph, okay? If you have a white Casio, that would be option three. And if you have a black or gray Casio, that would be option five, okay? And then you should see a screen that looks something like this where it says Y1, Y2, Y3. Uh, on a TI, you have a button that says Y equals and it's located in the top left-hand corner of your calculator. You wanna press that and then you'd have the Y1, Y2, Y3. Okay, now um, this is eventually what your screen will look like when you go to type it in, but there's a couple things, uh, don't get ahead of me because there's a couple things I need to talk about, okay? Um, first of all, if you have a, um, if you have a, a white Casio or an older TI, 
um, you want to make sure that your fractions, and I'm going to say this in the next slide, but you want to make sure your fractions are in their own set of brackets. Okay, so just take note of how I wrote it on the TI slide. White Casio, yours would look very similar to this. Okay, so you'd go bracket negative three. This is just divide by, you just press the division sign, the division button on your calculator, four, close your bracket, and then put X. Okay, now again, listen carefully because I'm going to try and help you through this process uh, with the common mistakes that I know kids make. First, there is a difference between a negative sign and a subtraction sign. Okay, your negative sign is the one that is in brackets. And for both TI and Casio, it's kind of in the bottom right hand corner of your buttons, okay? Um, you'll see a little negative sign with brackets around it. That's your negative sign. That's that. And why I'm saying that is because if you start your equation with a subtraction sign, whether you're Casio or TI, if you start your equation with a subtraction sign, you're gonna get a syntax error when you go to graph it. Okay, it has to start with a negative, not the subtraction. Um, okay, and then the other thing is this button. Okay, let's talk about the variable button. It's not alpha x, and be careful that you don't use alpha x, okay? For a Casio, your variable button is right underneath your alpha button. If you can find alpha, over to the left, it, you're going shift, alpha, and then you see the next button down says x theta t. That's your variable button. That's what you'll use when you wanna put that x there, okay? On a ti, your button says x t theta n, and it's to the right of your alpha button, okay? So it's in the second column. It's right underneath the mode button. Can you see it there? x t theta n button, okay? That's the button you'll use anytime you wanna talk about a variable, okay? Okay, so what you're working on is you're putting this into Y1 and Y2, okay? Uh, you type it into Y1, hit enter or execute, um, and that'll jump down to Y2 for you, and then hit enter or execute um, so that they're both stored there, okay? All right, so um, I already mentioned this, but note, if you don't have an operating system that allows you to display fractions vertically, so that would be older model TIs, TI-83s, TI-84s with not the new operating system, or the white uh, 9750 uh, Casios, okay? Those would be what I'm talking about right now. So that's how you would want to type it in with fractions, okay? All right, now you wanna graph your function. So uh, if you're a Casio, you will press the F6 button, which you'll notice in your menu says draw. If you are a TI, you'll press the graph button, which is, uh, in the top right hand corner of your uh, buttons, okay? And you should get a picture that looks like this. Now, if you don't get a picture that looks like this, it may be that your window settings are off, okay? You have to remember that um, your graph is only showing you a particular, a particular spot of, of these lines. These lines go on forever and ever and ever, okay? So your screen obviously can't go on forever and ever and ever. So your screen is set up to display a certain amount. So if you don't see these pictures exactly as you as I'm showing them to you right now, it might be that your window settings are off, okay? The standard window for both Casio and TI would go from negative 10 to 10 on the X scale and from negative 10 to 10 on the Y scale. Now, Casio kids, if you are looking at a picture, if you're looking at the lines right now, okay? Um, if you press F3, F3, it will put you into a standard window, okay? So you would press F3, F3, and then exit and draw again. Uh, if you're a TI kid, you would press zoom and then the number six, and it would put you into a uh, standard window, okay? Uh, the one thing I want to be very cautious of, uh, I want to go back to Casio for a sec. Casio kids, if, don't do that if you're not looking at the picture, okay? If you're looking at the equation, like the y equals y1, y2, y3, y4, and you do what I just said, it, it messes things up because it does something else, okay? So make sure you're looking at the picture when you do that. Okay, cool. So now, uh, if you weren't seeing this picture, you should now see this picture because you now are in a standard window, okay? All right. So 
<clears throat> here's my little conversation. Oh, I didn't realize that was on the next slide. Look at that, it's all written down for you. So if you can't see the same picture, adjust your window settings to a standard window, which is negative 10, 10, 1. Um, so that's for X and for Y. On Casio, you press F3, F3, and then exit and draw. Make sure you're looking at your graph when you do this. And then for Texas Instruments, it's zoom six. Okay, now we're gonna calculate the intersection point, okay? Uh, for Casio, uh, everything you ever wanna calculate as far as pictures go is in what's called the G solve button, and you'll notice that's F5. So if you press F5, uh, then you'll notice that your menu changes and F5 is now the intersect. So all you actually have to do is press F5, F5, and then give it a sec, and you'll notice that X equals four and Y equals negative six appears at the bottom of your screen, okay? For Texas Instruments, uh, how you do it is you have to get into the calculate the, the calculate feature of your graphing calculator. So to do that, you go second trace. You'll notice that the option above trace says calc, C-A-L-C. Um, so that's the calculating feature. So then you want option five, and then it asks you a series of questions. So it says, am I on the first curve that you want? And you say yes by pressing enter, and then it'll ask you if uh, you're on the second curve and you'll notice that your cursor jumped to the second line and you say yes and then it'll ask you if you want to guess and you don't care about guessing so you hit enter one more time and then you will also see uh, the x equals four and y equals negative six appear at the bottom of your screen okay all right good job now you can also access it from your table of values. Now, I, I don't use the table of values much, but some kids really like it and some teachers really like it. I'm just not a person who uses it much. I will show you how to get there though. Um, for Casio, you go back to your menu and then you press table, okay? Find the option that says table. And then you'll notice that the thing that you put into Y1 and Y2 is sitting there, okay? Um, and so then you can go uh, to your table and view it and what you'll be looking for. Sorry, I was gonna show you what you see, but I wanna to talk to TI kids first. Uh, but what you'll be looking for is, um, it'll tell you your X values um, and then the various Y values for Y1 and Y2. So you're looking for when those Y values are the same, okay? Um, and then for Texas Instrument, the way you get it is you go uh, second, it's actually second graph, okay? If you're, if you're actually looking for the button, it's second graph, you'll notice above the word graph, it says table. So that's how you get into your table, okay? And so then, for all of you, this might be what you'd be looking at. Um, and then what I want you to notice is this bottom line here, when X is four, Y1 is negative six and Y2 is negative six. So that again tells me, okay, that's my solution. My solution is four comma negative six because that's a point that's common to both of these, okay? All right, good. Now. New question, solve the following, state the window settings and verify your solution. So again, the first step would always be, I have to rewrite these as y equals mx plus b form. This is gonna feel like I'm going fast. Um, so remember, this is where you're gonna, wanna, you're gonna wanna start pausing and trying things yourself and then looking at my solutions, okay? So when I go to get y equals by itself, um, I brought my 4x over, and now I'm going to divide by 3. So I get y equals negative 4 over 3x plus 4. And then for the other guy, I'll bring my y over and my negative 4 over and get y equals 4x plus 4. Um, and then I don't need to divide anything there. y is already by itself. Okay, so put that into y1 and y2. Now, on, um, on both, um, all, you don't have to erase what's there. You can just override it. So um, for Casio, you just go back to your y equals. So go back to your graph, I guess is the first thing I should say. Um, graph or menu graph. For TI kids, go back to pressing the y equals button. And then just go to y1, highlight y1, and just start typing, okay? Now, there's a nice little check and balance feature for Casio that um, it will not actually register that equation in case you actually didn't want to overwrite, it won't register what you're typing until you hit enter, okay? So if, if at any point in time you're like, oh shoot, that's not what I wanted, you can just press exit and it will go back to the one that it had. Um, so type over it and then when you know you have it, what you want, hit execute on a Casio EXE or enter on a TI and uh, it will register that equation and jump down to Y2 for you, okay? Then go and look at your picture 
you should get a picture that looks something like this and I'm still in a standard window. So take note of how I'm representing my window, okay? I'm saying X and then what happens is this first number here is your minimum value, this number here is your maximum value, and this number here is your scale. So it's how often it shows a tick mark, okay? And then I state it for Y as well. And that is what we call a standard window. Neg 10, 10, 1 is a standard window for X and Y. If you want to see what your window settings currently are, um, if for Casio kids, if you're looking at the graph, uh, you just press F3. You'll notice on top it says V window there. And for TI kids, you would press window. Okay, and then you'll notice it gives you that list X min, X max, X scale, and Y min, Y max, Y scale. Okay, um, on a Casio, it also says dot underneath scale and it tells you a couple of other things. Don't worry about those, don't touch them, okay? And on a TI, it will also give you um, X res at the very bottom. Don't worry about that, okay? Just focus on the parameters that say X min, X max, and scale, and Y min, Y max, scale, okay? All right, and so uh, to find that solution, if you're a Casio kid, F5, F5. If you're a TI kid, second trace five, enter, 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 and you should get a solution of zero comma four. Okay, now it also said to verify, so we're gonna go back to our original equations. We're gonna plug zero in for X, we're gonna plug four in for Y, and we're gonna make sure we get a true statement. Remember that it has to be a true statement in both equations. It's not enough to show me that one works. Both have to work, and in this case, they do both work. So we're totally cool with the solution. Okay, next guy, go ahead and get Y by itself. All right, so we should have y equals two thirds x plus 24. And then for the other guy, we end up with y equals negative one half x. <clears throat> Go ahead and put those into y1 and y2. You just overwrite what's there. Remember to hit execute or enter after you're finished typing. And then go ahead and graph and you should get a picture that looks like this. Okay, Casio kids, F5, F5 will get you to your solution. TI kids, second trace five, enter, enter, enter. Now, notice that my window is no longer standard, okay? So when you first did this, you may have been like, whoa, dude, I don't see the intersection point. But you would have seen all the way to here, right? Because your standard window goes down to negative 10. So you would have seen kind of to the right of that line that I just put in. So essentially, here's my point. If you see a line like this and a line like this on your calculator, I would want you, you know, solid in your understanding to say, well, the intersection is somewhere over here. So I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to up my X max, okay? Now, you also actually wouldn't have seen that purple or the blue line right away now that I look at that a little closer because you would have only gone up to 10. So you would have only seen the red one, okay? So some of you are thinking to yourself, well, how do I know my window settings? Well. This is the conversation I wanted to have with this lesson. Um, think about that blue graph for a sec. It says y equals 2 thirds x plus 24. Well, to you know that 24 is your y-intercept, right? That's where it hits the y-axis. Well, if your y window on your graphic calculator only goes up to 10, then you're not going to see 24. So you're going to have to change your y-max to be above what your y-intercepts are in order to see both lines. Okay, so I chose to go up to 25 on mine. And then I just went by a scale of five so that um, I didn't have to look at 25 tick marks. If, I, if I'm looking at 25 tick marks, that's gonna be hard to read, okay? So the window I chose was uh, negative 25 uh, for my X min, five for my X max, and then five for my scale. And then for my y, I went negative five up to 25 and then five for that scale as well, okay? Um, don't get caught into thinking that the scales actually have to be the same for x and y. They don't, you just wanna get a nice picture there, okay? And a nice picture, usually you wanna see where you hit the y-axis. Um, it's nice to see where you hit the x-axis. I didn't show you where the blue graph here hits the x-axis because I didn't need to. I already got the intersection point there, but where it hits the y-axis for sure. Okay, then as I said, Casio kids, F5, F5 to get you the point of intersection. TI kids, second trace five, enter, enter, enter. 
and you should get a solution of negative 144 over 7 and 72 over 7. Now, how do I find that? Because your graphing calculator gave that to you as a decimal, okay? Here's the cool thing, though. Your graphing calculator stores that information, okay? So you're looking at, uh, when you go to solve it, you're looking at the number 20.57142857, negative that, sorry, <clears throat> for your x value, right? Well, if you then go back to your calculator, so Casio Kids, press menu one, um, TI Kids, you just quit, so you go second mode to quit, okay? And if you just go, press that variable button, okay, so that x theta button, and then just hit execute or enter, it's gonna give you that number on your screen. So negative 20.57, whatever it was there, okay? Well, then you can just press your F to S to D button to change it to a fraction if you are a Casio kid. And if you are a TI kid, press math, enter, enter to change it into a fraction. And that's where you'll get the negative 144 over seven, okay? It also stored your Y value. So uh, to get Y, you just go alpha Y, okay? So for a Casio kid, that would be alpha and then your subtraction sign. And for a TI kid, that would be alpha and then the number one, okay? Um, and then you get Y and then you just hit enter or execute and you get the Y number and then just change it to a fraction. So Casio kids, press your S to D button. Um, TI kids, press math, enter, enter. Okay, and that's where you'll get the 72 over seven. So it's nice that as soon as you calculate something in your graphing calculator, um, your graphing calculator will store that information for you as your x and your y, your variable in your y, um, and then you can go back to your calculator portion and change it to a fraction. Okay, never ever answer as decimals. Um, you should always answer as fractions. Okay, good. Now we're going to verify. Now this one is a long verification, uh, but it's good. It's a good one to practice because it helps your algebraic skills. So I'm just gonna strongly suggest that you pause me and try it yourself. Okay, I'm hoping you did well. Um, here I go, I plug in negative 144 over seven and for X and 72 over seven for Y. Okay, and I'm just working on the math and I do actually get zero equals zero. So the first guy gets verified. Remember that that's not enough though. I have to try the second guy as well. So I plug in my negative 144 over seven for X and my 72 over seven for Y, and I get zero equals zero for that guy as well. Okay, so I have verified that that is the solution. Okay, so now we're gonna do a couple word problems where we have to build the system and then solve it. Okay, so to visit the Head Smashed In Buffalo Jump Interpretive Center near Fort McLeod, Alberta, the admission fee is $5 per student and $9 per adult. In one hour, 32 people entered the center and a total of $180 in admission fees were collected. How many students attended? Okay, so we're gonna to put together everything we know. We gotta build the system first. In order to build the system, we need to talk about a legend. Well, what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, the number of students and the number of adults, okay? So I'm gonna say that <clears throat> X will be the number of students and Y will be the number of adults. Now I need to build my equation. So 32 people entered the center. So that's X plus Y equals 32, that's one. The other equation is gonna talk about the money. So it would be five X plus nine Y equals 180. Remember when we were building these earlier, I said it's important that you look at this and say, okay, like look at this five X plus nine Y. What does that side involve? It involves money. What does that side involve? It involves money. You have to make sure you put them together, okay? Um, don't mix up where the numbers go. Okay, so now I need to write these as y equals. This guy's easy, I just bring my x over, so it'll be y equals negative x plus 32. This guy, I have to bring my 5x over and divide by nine, and that's gonna give me y equals negative five over nine x plus 20. So go ahead and type those into y1 and y2 in your calculators. And let's think about window settings, okay? I have y-intercepts of 32. So for sure, um, you should have your y-max higher than 32, maybe 35, maybe 40, something like that. Then you wanna take a look at the window that you've got and adjust your x, min, and max in order to get a pretty picture. 
Okay, so I want you to try that first. I'll show you my picture, but pause me and you kind of deal with that first. Window settings are easy when you see somebody else come up with them for you, but that's not the point. I want you to try it so that you get more comfortable adjusting the windows and seeing what happens and then readjusting and seeing what happens until you get a picture that you think is good. Okay, so this would be a decent looking picture. My window settings go, my X is going from zero to 45 and my Y is going from zero to 40, maybe 35 there. Okay, and then when I go F5, F5 on a Casio or second trace five, enter, enter, enter on a TI, um, I should get X being 27 and Y being five. Now, when you are asked a word problem, the answer to the word problem is the answer to the question. The question said how many students attended and so my answer is there were 27 students in attendance. Okay, this is where you do not answer x equals this and y equals this. This is where you do not answer as a coordinate point, you answer the question. Okay, okay Annika's class raised $800 by selling $5 and $10 movie gift cards. The class sold a total of 115 gift cards. How much of each type did they sell? Okay, so my legend, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the number of $5 gift cards and the number of $10 gift cards. So I said, let the number of $5 cards be X and the number of $10 cards be Y. <clears throat> now I have to come up with my equations. So all together I sold 115 cards, so that's X plus Y equals 115. Then the second equation for this one involves the money. The money from the $5 cards would be five times the number of cards I sell. So 5X and uh, 10Y, and in total, it was $800 that I got. Okay, so now I need to rearrange these so that they say Y equals. So the first guy will be Y equals negative X plus 115. And the second guy, I bring my 5X over and divide everything by 10, and that would give me negative 1 half X plus 80. Okay, again, right away for window settings, you know, your y max has to be over 115 so you want to adjust that and then try and get a pretty picture okay please don't wait until i show you my picture pause me try it yourself so that you get comfortable the only way you get comfortable with this is adjusting it seeing what happens and seeing how you need to readjust okay okay so here's the pretty picture i got so my x's is going are going from zero to 90 ish I, went for up to 100 in scales of 10 and then my y's um, i'm going up to 120 in scales of 10 and then casio kids f5 f5 ti kids second trace five enter 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 uh, and you would get a solution of 70 comma 45 but now you have to answer the question the question was how many of each type so your answer is they sold 70 five dollar cards and 45 ten dollar cards Okay, the struggling around with the window settings is important. Um, I haven't actually said this yet, so I should just mention it. The reason it's important is because your graphing calculator can't calculate what it doesn't see. Okay, um, so if you tried to just like, if, if this was your picture and you said uh, second trace five, enter, 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 you'd get some sort of an error message. Okay, um, for Casio, Interestingly enough, it doesn't actually have to see it as long as the domain is there. So as long as your X is there, it doesn't actually have to see where the Y is. Um, but it's a good practice because you usually want to draw a picture anyway. So it's a good practice to adjust your window settings so that you see the intersection. And that way you can give me a good drawing of it as well. Okay. All right. So in summary, to solve a system using your graphing calculator, we look at the table of values and look for where the points are the same, or we find the point of intersection on the graph. We can always verify a solution by plugging the point back into the original equations. Okay, and that's it. So have fun playing around with this. Please make sure you, you troubleshoot with me, okay? That's what I'm here for. Um, if you run into any, um, any trouble, just come and chat with me and we can go through things together again, okay? In the meantime, have a fantastic day, and we'll see you for the next lesson on substitution, which is very fun. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.